Hey everybody, uh, this is Jeff, Swing Trade Warrior with WarriorTrading.com. Uh, gonna go over tomorrow's watch list. Uh, we got a lot of good names on there. Um, and uh, as always, if you guys have any questions as uh, I go through this, or you want me to take a look at any stocks, uh, just go ahead and type them, uh, type your question in. Also, if you have any questions and you're watching this on a recording, feel free to email me, Jeff at WarriorTrading.com. Always happy to help other traders uh, and answer any of your questions. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's get started with uh, tomorrow's watch list. It's our first full week uh, in April, and uh, we have, in the past couple weeks here, experienced a uh, roughly 15% uh, move in the S&P or the SPY. So uh, right now we're following a pretty bullish pattern here. We keep moving up uh, in three, four days at a time. We have these small pullbacks and consolidation periods before we leg up again pull back, leg up, pull back, leg up. Uh, so this is a pretty standard bullish, uh, very bullish chart. Uh, right now, <clears throat> we have the 208 area on watch for our next resistance target. So I suspect, just like we've had the previous 200, 205 area, uh, 195 area, we'll tap that area a couple times, probably sell off back down to 205, and uh, pop up higher and maybe move through uh, back toward the all-time highs. Uh, so right now uh, we're just trading sideways. We're in an inside candle here. We had this big bullish move on Friday, um, and then today was a lighter volume, uh, lighter volume pullback here. We didn't really give up much, uh, much ground though. So everything's looking strong uh, for that 208 test. Either way, uh, whether we come down and we test 205 support, or we go higher and we test 208 resistance, either way. Uh, like I always tell the students, and like I always do myself, uh, we have opportunities ready to go long or short. Either way, we're not really biased one way or the other. Uh, we try and maintain a delta neutral portfolio, and that means is, um, you know, we're not overly, uh, overly long or overly short positions, and uh, we're able to profit in uh, all market conditions. So, uh, in the trending market like this, we're just looking to play these pullbacks for the short trades. Uh, we'll go over those in a minute here. A uh, couple other things I wanted to show you. Uh, IVB, been watching this one for a while. Uh, let, me pull up a, let me pull up a different chart of that here. Okay, oh. Where? All right, so you can see uh, IVB has been trading in a pretty big range since uh, back in February here, 240 lows. Um, and then uh, high right here, just under 270, 268. So between these red and green lines, big support and resistance area. Uh, today, we finally had a break above uh, the 50 moving average as well as the uh, resistance line here given to us by our friends over at uh, Taz uh, Market Profile here. This uh, Taz box uh, tells us that uh, the price action at the two, uh, 268.60 area is uh, pretty heavy once we get over that. Uh, we should be able to trend a little bit higher. Of course, we're looking for that first move uh, to resistance relatively short term. Uh, we see that there's some resistance here at 285. How do we determine that? Well, because this was previous support for uh, August and October. Uh, so these previous support areas will become future resistance. And it also acted as a midpoint for this pivot area here uh, back in early January. Okay, so that'll be uh, up on tap here shortly. Uh, Short term, though, I think that we have. Uh, oops. Short term, I think that we have uh, an opportunity uh, to get to the 280 area uh, before uh, the 285. Obviously, I think short term we have a good chance of getting to 280, uh, and then maybe pulling back and trading between 270 and 280. Uh, 285 will be a little bit harder to get to, uh, especially if the market wants to come in here. But uh, either way. I like this because implied volatility is low. Uh, the implied volatility rank is in the low 30, uh, low 30s. So what that means is uh, volatility is has room to expand. So if we get a nice sustained breakout move to the upside here, uh, and volatility comes in, we could see debit spreads uh, profit a little bit quicker. So we're looking at a debit spread here to capitalize on this move uh, over to uh, 275 here. We tapped it today. Uh, we're kind of sitting there right now. If I zoom out, going back to um, uh, what is this? Uh, nine September of 2014, we can see that the next area of resistance is going to be 280, uh, which is right here. Now IBB has an 8-point ATR, right? So this thing will move 
uh, many points and uh, it'll move much more than uh, five to ten points in some days. Uh, so we're, like I said, looking for a very short-term trade here, looking to capitalize on any spikes in implied volatility. So the move to 280, it's not a sure thing. Nothing is a sure thing, but it's a very high probability chance that I think we test that in the next uh, in the next few days. If not, certainly by expiry. Um, so I'm looking at the May monthlies on IBB, uh, looking at a debit spread here uh, for about two dollars and uh, what did I have? Uh, two dollars and ten cents or so. We'll uh, bid pretty aggressively, see if we can't get a, a good deal on uh, on a call spread for the May 275 by 280. So that means we're going to buy to open the 275 calls. We're going to sell to open the 280 calls for a net debit of 210. Again, we're looking for 30 to 50 percent. So uh, price action. So uh, IBB is at 270 right now. Price action. Um, you know, if we get a spike up to 275, 76, 77, we'll probably be pretty close to 50% profits by then, um, especially if it happens very short term. So, uh, like I said, not looking for a huge move here, but uh, I like the strength of this chart here, and I think that we have a very good opportunity to capitalize on that uh, injection of, uh, in, uh, of volatility uh, once this thing uh, gains some traction. As always, you can see uh, the volume here is increasing. Relative volume is spiking, which is good. That means buyers are coming in. It's what we want to see. Uh, and you know, as always, we'll uh, we'll take our size, and then we will look to uh, scale out. And so I'll sell half at 30 to 50, and I'll look to hold half uh, for the bigger move here. So we'll see what happens. We have until May. I don't think there's uh, too much trouble testing this 280 spot by May, which will give us an opportunity to make that 30 to 50 minimum we're looking for. So this is a good setup. Uh, and that's what we're going to be watching uh, for tomorrow. Uh, one of the names, let's see, another one is going to be uh, EYES Eyes. Uh, let me pull it up over here. Okay, taking a look at Eyes here, we have this. Uh, this is a previous big runner. Uh, a lot of people have traded this name, or a lot of people are probably familiar with this name. Um, when this thing IPO'd back in November. Uh, you can see it was at uh, $24 or so, and it slowly sold its way off down to five bucks. Uh, it's been trading at the uh, under $10 area for quite some time now. What I like about this here is that the stock has uh, the potential for big moves, um, whether they're uh, catalysts from FDA, uh, FDA noise, uh, earnings, whatever. Uh, this thing has a tendency to put in runs. You can see uh, lately they've been to the downside, to the downside, but you can also see here to the upside. This thing's uh, this thing popped up here nearly 100%, uh, 60, 63% here in just three days. Uh, so there is potential for big moves. Um, the pattern has been in a downtrend uh, since we got this uh, sideways pattern here. We got this short term moving average, the 20, crossed under the 50. And uh, we've been in a downtrend ever since. We're at a point now where the 20 is looking to cross above the 50. So we've consolidated long enough here that the 20 is going to squeeze the 50 out. Uh, and we can see another spike up to the $7 area like we did a few days ago. Um, especially uh, if the, um, uh, the market holds up. I think that this has a good opportunity getting back to the $7 area. If not, uh, somewhere under 8 in the next short in the next few days. Uh, keep in mind when I'm looking at my swings here, I'm always looking with a two to four day mindset. Uh, you know, if I can get out of a trade with my three to five percent uh, in one day, that's great. Uh, but realistically, I'm looking for the bigger move uh, over two to four days is probably the average hold time. So uh, again, this is a downtrending stock for a long time. Uh, the 20 cross below the 50, the 20 is purple, the 50 is white. We get this big sell off uh, over the period of a few months. And now we get this curl up on the bottom here, and we get the 20 about ready to cross over the 50, which would be a short-term bullish indicator. Uh, if it's crossing to the upside, it could be the indication of a trend reversal. Trend is down. We're looking for the trend to go higher. So we'll see. Uh, like I said, short-term, we have room to the $7. Uh, that is the high of this recent move. And it is also going to be where the 200, this yellow line, the 200 moving average uh, lives. And so I think that's probably where we'll catch a breather. But considering the stock is at $5.15, there's more than enough room uh, to make money on a $2 move here. So uh, again, uh, looking at this for a long here over uh, the 530 area, um, the high right here of this uh, 14th, March 14th, you can see this little high. Oh, yep, this little high. Oh, nope. This little high right there. 
the little doji day right there that's going to be the high of this whole range um, we're going to take that as our entry spot so somewhere around the 530 mark we're going to look to get long I'll scale into this trade here uh, we'll get long right here right about here we're going to add to this trade somewhere over here uh, the 570 area okay because that's going to be the second uh, high as we go back in time here it's going to be the next highest peak in this range and then obviously we're going to look to sell uh, through the move here towards uh, seven bucks. So somewhere uh, in this range here, we're going to look to take our profits. Uh, pretty clear uh, chart uh, for a um, uh, a bullish breakout to the upside. Uh, whether or not it happens, we'll find out. But we'll scale into this slowly. 5:30 over 5:70. We'll add some more, and we'll take our profits on the way to seven. Okay, so that's eyes e y e s. Let me pull up uh, the next one here. TWX, got to give props to uh, one of our members for finding this trade. Uh, Josh, he pointed this one out to me uh, the other day. Uh, TWX has been trading a very bullish uptrend following their uh, last event. Uh, putting in a 33% move in just about a month and a half. Uh, very strong. We've crossed over all the EMAs. It's trading along the 200 moving average, which is a strong support area. And you can see that the 200 for the most part has uh, has been holding up you can also see that there's a nice little top of resistance just under 74 bucks uh, 73.66 uh, you can see it was the high of this range first time it tested that area in months and then uh, the only other time in 2016 it tested that area it also failed and that was back on January 8th so obviously this is an area of some contention today uh, today we had a break above that area and it came and closed uh, you can see the doji here it closed uh, just about that area 7356 was our close so again that area is still in play having an influence on the stock but now that we've broken that area and the volume is peaking the volume is spiking you can see this increase in volume uh, tells us that uh, people are seeing this big breakout uh, potential over the top of this big resistance uh, you know buyers are coming in so they didn't win the battle today but we'll see what happens going forward uh, if we can get through this area which is also resistance from back here in September uh, we have pretty clear room on this chart to uh, 76 short term and then right up on right up here uh, somewhere in this area we're probably going to see a move to 78 between 78 and, and 80 bucks it's not really super clean right here we'll zoom out a little bit and see what we have uh, yeah, you can see that the 78 area is going to be a pivot um, it was previous uh, resistance back in here acted as support and through here so previous resistance became future support and then it became uh, support before breaking below and now it's acting as resistance again so if we can get through this area uh, we should see uh, this area come into play 76 and then again the 78 area uh, will be the next target uh, that's about four points of room if we get in over the uh, 74 area more than enough room to make a profit again we're going to look at uh, a spread on this the implied volatility is low here and uh, we're looking for the may monthly the 7580 call spread for a debit of a dollar fifty means we're going to buy to open the 75 may monthly strikes uh, calls and we're going to sell to open the may uh, monthly 80 calls for a net debit of a dollar fifty looking for a thirty to fifty percent profit on that dollar fifty debit uh, so uh, probably getting out of this trade between two dollars and two dollars and uh, two dollars and fifty cents or so we'll look to scale out uh, with profits um, again this one is a little bit heavier uh, heavier stock it does trade on larger volume so this will require a little bit of cooperation from the market however because implied volatility is low we know that there's a high percentage uh, or high probability chance that it will uh, increase in the next uh, few weeks here before expiry certainly and um, you know we know that uh, this is also a high probability setup here very bullish very strong chart so even if the market uh, is gonna uh, is gonna take a breather between that 205 208 area we talked about this is not a problem holding this here is uh, is quite fine um, you can see the market strength kind of matches uh, Time Warner strength. And so that's what we're looking for uh, as far as our long names go. Uh, a couple of short names I have on watch for tomorrow. One is going to be the Zillow group here. Uh, Zillow is moving down after a big run up following their event in uh, February. 60% move. It's traded sideways, failed to break out over the 200. 
and it has rejected this area uh, also in a weak market. Uh, and I say weak, but you know the market is in a pullback right now, so um, it is rejecting this area, this 200 area, on increasing volume. Selling pressure is picking up, and uh, in the last two days we've uh, rejected the 20, we've blasted through the 20, and now we're testing the 50. So uh, as moving averages can act as uh, trend indicators, they also act as support and resistance. We know that if this 50 uh, EMA falls here, there's a likely chance uh, we'll see an even bigger volume spike to the down, uh, an, an even bigger selling volume spike, which will drive the price to the downside quickly. Uh, to the 2275 area, that's going to be our first target. How did I find that? It's the peak of this day right here. Uh, it's also the peak of this day right here. And if I zoom out, you can see that it acted as a pivot here. Keep in mind, it's not exactly uh, at that area to the dime, but it's going to be somewhere around that area um, that we're going to find uh, uh, we're going to find some support for the stock as it moves lower. It might even be in the 80s. So either way, it's over a point uh, point away. Uh, looking for that as our first target. Second target on this is going to be closer to uh, the 2175 area. Um, come on. 2180 uh, right here determine this area because uh, it was a big top and through here uh, recently you can see it acted as some resistance um, and it was also a resistance point right here very briefly before moving higher so we can expect that previous resistance will act as future support uh, again it also coincides with a pivot uh, back here where uh, the stock price had bounced off after piercing that so if it wants to pierce it again that's great we'll take our profits at the second target there uh, first target's 2280, and uh, our entry will be under 2350 or so, um, so that we make sure that we've moved well past the 50 moving average as well as the previous day's low. Candle under candle confirmation will be, uh, excuse me, candle under candle will give us confirmation of the trend to the downside. You can see the first candle to reject the 50, then we have candle under candle uh, as it moves lower. We're looking for candle under candle continuation here, uh, confirming that we're in a downtrend. So we want to short this on the way down. So that is Zillow Group, and that'll be on short watch tomorrow. Uh, and LM here, this is an interesting setup, very similar. Uh, we have this uh, big move up here from their event in February to uh, about 42%. Uh, we have a consolidation period, an inability to break out here. Oops, an inability to break out here over this 3530 area. Uh, why this area here? Because it acted as a resistance area back in here. And uh, I'm sure if we go back out in time further, we can see uh, it played a role uh, even further back in time. But anyways, right now it's rejecting this area. Again, we're moving down lower, testing support at the 20 and the 50 EMA. Uh, we had a big run up, so there's a lot of room uh, to come down here, uh, especially if the market comes in. This is a financial. Financials tend to move a little bit quicker in uh, market drawdowns. And so uh, we can see this moving. Uh, we can see this moving lower here if it breaks down under 3286. That is where the 50 moving average is. First target under 3286 is going to be 3177. How did I get that area? It's previous support uh, during this uh, time frame here when uh, the stock broke out uh, in March after their event in February. It traded and used this 3177 area as support for every day except for this one where we had the big spike down. So. Uh, coincidentally, that also ties in with our uh, next support area, uh, which is going to be 3062. Again, that was a previous resistance area in this time frame here. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to look to short this stock here under 3286. We're going to look to take profit at 3187, and again down down toward 3060 uh, as the second target. Once again, uh, we have a nice move to the downside, confirmed uh, that this is. Uh, uh, reversing whether or not it continues will determine if we get candle under candle action uh, but the buying or excuse me the selling volume uh, massive uh, volume spike today of two times relative volume and so uh, that's a, a good indicator that people are seeing this area of weakness and rejection and as a rejection opportunity and uh, moving it down there's also some uh, 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 analyst who came out and made some comments on this uh, as well. So uh, we have a couple things moving in our favor. If we can get below these moving averages, it's a short-term trend reversal and the stock will no longer uh, be in an uptrend and we'll capture that move to the downside uh, shortly and earn a short amount of time. That's our that's our goal. Uh, one last name I wanted to look at here uh, was uh, USO. 
USO, I've traded uh, with much success over the past uh, couple of years. I absolutely uh, have crushed the stock for uh, a ton of money. This has been a great trade for us. We took this one back in uh, January here. Uh, we had a 8.30 something, 8.33, 8.31 average or so. We started accumulating this on the way down uh, and we started selling covered calls against it and we ended up getting uh, called out of this thing here when the stock was well over ten dollars but we had some 950 calls uh, and uh, we ended up making a nice profit on it so uh, looking to get back into the stock uh, sometime in the near future here I see that it has had a pretty wild sell-off from uh, its highs here uh, looks like it's down about 16 percent and so uh, long term I'm bullish on oil uh, you know I don't want to fight the trend obviously which is very bearish um, but at some point we will see that uh, uh, oil will make some sort of recovery uh, this 50 moving average again is our baseline and the 20 EMA the purple one here uh, is crossing over the 50 giving us a short-term bearish signal so I expect this to continue selling I'll look to con uh, accumulate uh, some of this on the way down I don't really have an exact entry spot in mind uh, I definitely want to get it under nine dollars again I don't really want to buy it over nine um, I'd like to buy this here around uh, you know somewhere around the low eights if possible uh, and then I would add to my position as this thing moves higher either way uh, not really looking to get in this tomorrow necessarily it'll depend on uh, price action and where uh, USO ends up here but I'd like to get it 850 maybe even closer to 8 and uh, then what we'll do is we'll wait for a big spike in the uh, to the upside in oil and that'll bring in some volatility for us in which we'll sell covered calls against our position and uh, we'll lower our net cost by collecting the credit from the premium of selling those covered calls and we'll wait and if we get called out uh, assigned on those short options then they can take our shares from us for a profit and we'll keep all of the premium uh, that we got for selling it and uh, if not we'll just hold those this is going to be a long-term trade okay I'm not looking to take this off in two to four days I'm looking to get uh, a couple more zeros on on this type of trade it's a cheap stock it's very liquid and there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, operational or business risk associated with it a lot of people ask me why I don't trade leverage ETFs I don't trade leverage ETFs because you have leverage uh, ETF decay as well as um, uh, a little bit more risk when you're trading with leverage names uh, like UWTI or DWTI. So um, I definitely avoid uh, I definitely avoid leverage names when I'm swing trading. Uh, also, I like USO and not CVX, XOM, or any of the oil companies uh, because USO doesn't have earnings. It's tied directly to uh, you know crude prices. It's not going to have a CEO get arrested. Uh, for fraud, it's not going to uh, be investigated by the SEC for uh, you know uh, screwing up dividends or cooking the books. There's no business risk associated with it. It just tracks uh, the prices of crude, and I uh, can minimize risk and feel comfortable because of the liquidity. Trades 40, 38 million shares today. Uh, you know, I, I only need a few thousand. So um, those are a couple of factors that. Uh, push me toward USO for a trade versus some of the other names. Uh, something to consider if you're looking uh, to uh, put names in your long-term or your longer-term portfolio. Consider using, uh, you know, the more liquid ETFs that uh, aren't necessarily going to be subject to the same risks uh, that you would find from companies. What price am I looking to get in on IVB? So I'm looking to get filled for two dollars and ten cents. I believe I said on my debit spread so I'm not sure what price IBB will be at when that happens uh, I think what will happen is it'll determine uh, it'll depend on where it opens and also implied volatility uh, that's going to be the biggest factor on what price I get filled so I'm not actually looking to trade the stock I'm going to be looking to trade the May monthly 275 280 call spread for a debit of 210 and I think the, uh, the mark right now or the midpoint is about 250 so what I'd like to see ideally is the market open a little bit lower tomorrow and uh, IVB will open a little bit lower as well. I get filled and then uh, as the market starts to recover this uh, name goes up as well and we start to profit uh, as soon as possible. That's my goal. Uh, whether or not that happens we'll see. I'm pretty stubborn. I like to get filled at the prices I like to get filled at but 
Um, looking for that 210 debit entry. I'll go up to 250 if necessary. Um, but we're going to see if we can't snag it cheap first thing in the morning, especially if uh, the market opens lower. Okay, you guys have any other questions for me? I'm going to send out our email watch list uh, to our members here, and then I'm going to uh, watch uh, ESPN for baseball highlights, and then I'm going to bed. If you guys have any questions and you're watching this on a recording, email me jeff at warriortrading.com. Always happy to answer any questions. Uh, other than that, I hope everybody has a good week, and we'll be back tomorrow with uh, our next watch list installment. Everybody have a good night. Thanks.